In this video, I'm going to cover AP Precalculus Topic 1.2 about rates of change. Uh, this is an extremely important topic as it pops up in, over and over and over again in this course. Uh, we're going to see how it may appear um, on the AP exam during the free response, um, but it's really rather simple. Uh, the average rate of change between two points is the slope through those two points, and you've been dealing with slope for a very long time. Uh, so if we're talking about the interval a, b, the average rate of change, which you'll see me uh, just say a, r, o, c, just to shorten it down a little bit, um, but our average rate of change is slope, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, rise over run. A little bit more mathy, a little bit more formally, is f of b minus f of a over b minus a. It's the difference in the y values over the difference in the x values. Uh, so we can find this in a number of different ways. First, we're going to look at add an equation. So our equation is f of x is x squared minus 4 on the interval negative 1 to 4. So something I want you to get in the habit of doing, this is something I do both in pre-calc and calculus, is write our formula. Um, so I'm doing the interval here. My function is f, so I want f of 4 minus f of negative 1 over 4 minus negative 1. Start with our little template there with our, our numbers plugged in. It doesn't matter if you do, if you flip these, but if you flip it, they both have to be flipped. I tend to do the farther, the bigger x value first than the smaller x value, um, but as long as they match here and here, you're good to go. Well, f of 4 and f of negative 1. I'm going to go ahead and do this as a side calculation. f of 4 is going to be 4 squared minus 4, which is 16 minus 4, which is 12. And then f of negative 1 is negative 1 squared minus 4. A negative squared is always positive, so we get 1 minus 4, which is a negative 3. Then I'm going to plug those into my formula. So f of 4 was 12 minus negative 3 over 12, 4 minus negative 1, let's just go ahead and calculate that as 5. So we get 15 over 5, and we get 3. All right, next one, 1 over x. So now my function is g. So I'm going to say g of 4 minus g of negative 2 over 4 minus a negative 2 do my side calculations. So g of 4 is 1 fourth, g of negative 2 is negative 1 half, and we'll go ahead and plug those in. So we have 1 fourth minus a negative 1 half over 6. If we add 1 fourth and 1 half, we get 3 fourths, which is 3 over 24, or a reduced 1 eighth. Okay, now we're looking at a graph, and this is a good moment to talk about kind of the graphic consequence of the average rate of change. So on this graph, um, I have a point at negative 1, negative 4, and a point at 1, 0, and that's my interval. I'm actually going to go ahead and draw a line through those points. Because physically what we're doing here is finding the slope of this line. A, a line that goes through two different points on a graph, even though it's going through other ones, is called a secant line. Okay, the slope of the secant line. Um, easily we can see on the graph we have a slope of 1, but let's go ahead and go through the math to support that. Okay, from my function, my f of 1 is 0. My f of negative 3 is negative 4 over 4, which is 4 over 4, which again is 1. Next, we have a table of values. Uh, so we're using, we're going on the interval 3, 10. So again, I'm going to do my template, f of 10, I guess it's h of 10 minus h of 3 over 10 minus 3. And we simply get these values from the table. So you go to 10, f of 10, h of 10 is 7 h of 3 is negative 5. So we get 
12 over 7. Same thing here. F of 5, H of 5. So used to it. F. Uh, H of 5 minus H of negative 2 over 5 minus negative 2. According to my table, H of 5 is 2. H of negative 2 is 3. And we get a negative 1, 7. Next, we're going to look at a, an example of a tire that is losing pressure. Uh, the table above gives the pressure, P of T, in pounds per square inch at time T minutes. Find the average rate of change on two different intervals, 0 to 2 and 10 to 12. What does this tell you about that tire pressure? All right, so we're going to do P of 2 minus P of 0 over 2 minus 0. P of 2 is 25, P of 0 is 32, over 2, this simplifies down to negative 7 over 2, or negative 3.5. We're going to come back to what this means. Let's look at P of 12 minus P of 10, over 12 minus 10. From our table, we get 16 minus 18 over 2, which is a negative 1. Okay, I'm going to attach some units to this. Uh, in this, um, easy units, whatever the units are on the top over the units on the bottom. So here was my pressure in PSI. So this is going to be PSI per minute. This is PSI per minute. Well, from 0 to 2, we lost, on average, 3.5 PSI per minute. From 12 to 10, we were only using about 1 PSI per minute. And I say losing because it's negative, negative air pressure here. Or not negative air pressure, but the pressure is decreasing, uh, so we get a negative value for the rate of change. So what this tells us is from 0 to 2, the pressure was dropping faster than it was from 12 to 10, which, which makes sense. Uh, thinking about this as the, the first, as there's more pressure, the pressure is going to drop a lot quicker. As there's less pressure, it's still going to decrease, but it goes a lot slower. So just as a quick explanation, the pressure is decreasing faster from 0 to 2 than it is from 10 to 12. On the AP pre-calculus exam, there are four free response questions, and they are very uh, standardized. We know what to expect on each of those four. On the free response to task model, you will be asked to calculate the rate of change of some context. Then you'll be asked to do something with that. So we're going to practice that here. Uh, so a scientist is studying the population of an endangered mouse in a particular area. At the beginning of the study, t equals zero, uh, there are 35 mice. At t equals four, Four years later, there are 89 mice, so A. And this will be something you will be asked to do on your AP exam, is to calculate the average rate of change on a given interval. So we are looking for our function. We didn't have it named. That's good. We're going to go F of 4 minus F of 0 over 4 minus 0. So we have 89 minus 35 over 4. Uh, this is a calculator active question, so you will typically be asked to write yours as decimals. Let's go ahead and attach units, even though we're not asked to. I think it's nice. I think it helps with the, the follow-up questions. The units on the top were mice. The units on the bottom were years. So that's 13.5 mice per year. So what does this mean? Okay, we're going to start with the word on Average, okay, on average, the amount of mice, so whatever thing you're talking about, in this case, the amount of mice. If this is positive, it's increasing. If it's negative, it's decreasing. So our mice increased by 13.5 mice per year. Now it's important to say our time intervals here. 
from t equals 0 to t equals 4. Because we don't know what's happening after 4 years. Uh, we just know what happened from 0 to 4. Uh, so you may be asked to interpret. The other thing you may be asked to do is to use the average rate of change to predict how many there were in year 2. Okay, well, different ways to do this. I'm just going to say in year 0, we had 35 mice. I'm going to say f of 2 is approximately. It was 35, and then we're increasing on average 13.5 per year. Well, we're doing this for two years. So I'm going to say 13.5 times 2. And again, you get a calculator for this. So my model predicts that there was possibly 62 mice. It makes sense that it's somewhere in between 35 and 89. Is that exact? No, we don't know, uh, but it's a good prediction. Um, we could also predict, you know, t equals 6. We just need to add however many years from one of our known values. Okay, next we're going to dip a little bit into the calculus world, uh, where we're talking about average rate of change versus instantaneous rate of change. Uh, eventually, you will use calculus and the concept of a derivative uh, to look at this. Um, but right now, we're going to use rate of change. Um, so numerically, we can estimate the instantaneous rate of change um, by looking at the average rate of change over a small interval. Uh, so rather than going from like 0 to 10, if we wanted to estimate what the rate of change was at 10, you could go like 9.9 .9 to 10.1. Graphically, instantaneous rate of change is the slope of the tangent line. So a secant line touches a graph at two points. A tangent line touches the graph at one location. Uh, so we're going to graph this, and we're just going to do the best we can. But it's the slope at that point. So yes, I could go through here and go, er, there's a, it's only touching one time. Um, but we're matching the slope here. So we're just going to take our straight edge here. I'm going to line it up with the dot. And there's approximately my slope. B is a little bit less. So it says, at which point is the rate of change the greatest? So we have this one. This one's a little bit less. At C here, that's what my tangent line would look like. And then D, down at our minimum, which we'll learn about later, my slope would be 0. So here I've got a 0 slope, a negative slope, two positive slopes, but my biggest positive slope is going to be at point A. All right. And lastly, we're going to talk about how rates of change play into our graphs. And we've kind of already talked about this, um, but this is another big idea, is the relationship between what is the graph doing and what is the rate of change doing. Um, so in my chart, we have increasing, decreasing, and then we have concave up and concave down. So increasing, as our x values increase without bound, our y values are increasing without bound. As we go this way, the graph is going up. No matter where I draw a secant line or a tangent line, the slope is going to be positive. So the rate of change is going to be positive when we have a graph that is increasing versus a graph that's decreasing my rates of change whether I'm going through a secant line or a tangent line, is always going to be negative. For concavity, and I'm just going to kind of talk about the tangent lines, but this still applies to the secant lines. We talked about this a little bit before. If I were to draw a tangent line here, a tangent line here, a tangent line here, I have a negative value. I have a zero slope, I have a positive slope here. So if I'm going from negative, big negative, little negative, it's getting less negative than it's zero, then it's getting little positive, then more positive, then more positive, the slopes themselves are increasing. So the rate of change is increasing. So anytime we say, and this goes back and forth, if we have a graph that has an increasing rate of change, that tells me our graph is concave up. If our graph is concave up, that means we have an increasing rate of change. The slopes are becoming bigger. Concave down, the opposite is true. Here I've got a positive, 
less positive, zero, little negative, bigger negative. So those numbers are going down. They're getting more and more negative. So my rate of change is decreasing. Okay, so you really want to have that understanding of the relationship between rate of change and the graphic consequence of that. So increasing and decreasing. Increasing our rate of change is always going to be positive. Decreasing our rate of change is always negative. Concave up, it's increasing. The rate of change is increasing. Concave down, our rate of change is decreasing. Uh, so we can kind of go back and forth. Uh, first, the graph of f is positive negative. This is talking about the graph of f. Okay, this is physically is the graph giving us positive y values or negative y values. This graph is above the x-axis, so our graph is positive. And they're going to throw stuff at you like that to really understand what aspect are you talking about. Are you talking about the graph, the rate of change, the what? Okay, the graph of f is increasing. We can see that pretty clearly. The consequence of that is that the rate of change must be positive. The graph here is concave down, which means my rate of change is decreasing. It doesn't necessarily mean it's negative. It just means that the slopes, here I have a big positive slope, less positive, less positive, but the slopes themselves are decreasing. One final example here. This graph, here's my x-axis. This guy is, lies below, so this is negative. The graph is decreasing which means my rate of change is negative, and it is concave up this time. So our rate of change is increasing. We have a really big negative slope. We'll say that's negative 10, then negative 5, then negative 2, then... So it's the values are getting bigger. Thank you for watching. This was AP Precalculus Topic 1.2, all about the very important rate of change.